نحمده و نسلی علی رسول الكریم اما بعد و السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاته Man has always been interested and keen to understand what is that man is made of. And once the understanding is brought as to what man is made of, is how do you then grade men? So about a century or so ago, the concept of IQ was brought about, intelligence quotient, which was a means to measure the intelligence of a person. And they would use quite abstract patterns and designs so that it would be logical. Even then it was slightly flawed because there was cultural biases, language biases as well. So it was aimed towards a, a, a Western audience. So it would grade people from Africa, Asia, Middle East lower than normal. But they felt it was the best thing that it had to measure mankind because really intelligence was the key. How do you measure intelligence of a person? Where does intelligence come from? Intelligence is what is handed to us by our parents, what we uh, inherit, and also environmental factors that can play a part. So they said it was important, obviously you hear figures like, oh, Albert Einstein's IQ was 160, Stephen Hawking's IQ was X, Y, Z, whatever. And you hear these figures, and it was as they felt the best way to measure the human. And then many people would do these tests in order to recruit the best people, the best minds into those particular jobs to make sure that they had the best person. As time went on, people realized that actually, you know what, this only measured one aspect of the human. And then something called EQ came along, which was the emotional aspects. For example, the non-verbal cues that we pick up on. When somebody's upset with us, they don't have to say it. Having a sense of maturity, understanding people's feelings, empathy. You could have a very high IQ or a very low EQ. Those of us who experience ADHD, or some level of autism may be exceptionally high as an IQ in some cases. But when it comes to EQ, maybe low. So then they found that actually, you know what? We need to also take EQ into consideration. That it's not just a measure of a person's intellect that is the key part. There's also this other element of a human, his emotional side, his, the, the feelings, more what comes from maybe the heart, not just necessarily the brain. But even this, unfortunately, is a step not far enough. Because there is something which I'm gonna call SQ, which doesn't exist at the moment, so I'm gonna trademark it. Okay, anybody uses it from now on, I want 10%. And SQ is the spiritual intelligence. SQ is the spiritual intelligence which at the moment nobody is really measuring. People will measure IQ. People are now measuring EQ. There's tests that you can do, usually multiple choice. If you were in this scenario, would you do A, B, C, or D? How would you behave here? One of your colleagues at work comes and says this to you. What would you say in return? If you saw this going on, how would you behave? So looking at how we would interact with the humans around us, but there's at the moment nothing which is looking at the spiritual side. So you might have somebody who is academically very bright, can write an excellent, well thought out article, a good argument, is well aware, is very empathetic towards others, but is morally corrupt. But is morally corrupt. So even though the intelligence is there and the EQ is there, this understanding, this spiritual engagement is lacking. We find in the Quran, Inna akramakum in the law at atqaqum. That if you're going to measure honor, which in another way is how, how, why are you going to respect people? Because we respect people with a high IQ, don't we? We respect intelligence people. We look down on dumb people. Yeah, we don't want to be called dumb. We don't want to be called stupid. We want to be called clever. 
So it's something that's sought after, it's honorable. Similarly, we want to be people who are emotionally considered as aware of our surroundings and a good emotionally balanced person that can pick up these cues and, and, and understand these things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in terms of your honor, in terms of your status, in terms of how you should be comparing yourself, this requires your taqwa. That's what this requires. So in order to truly understand the human, it is not just the focus on his or her intelligence, which is, also, is important, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to dismiss this. It's not just their sort of uh, emotional side of things, but it's also their spiritual side of things. So the question then arises that obviously it's obvious that if you had all three qualities at a high level, that would be the best thing to have. High intelligence, okay, good emotional intelligence, and a high spiritual status as well. That would make the person well balanced. That would make the person the ideal individual. But let's just say we don't have that. What should we be striving for? What should we be the key element? We saw, for example, when we spoke about at talaq al-Maratani in one of the tafsir sessions a few days back. And obviously I mentioned that obviously before talaq comes marriage. And then we quoted the hadith to you about tunkahul maratul arba'a, that woman is married for four things. Mal and her, leg, uh, her status, her beauty, waghera. And then her deen. And it was said that focus on that. That's what you need to focus on. So when we come back to this point about we have these three aspects of a human, their intelligence, their emotional side, and their spiritual side. If you had to prioritize one, yeah, if you had to prioritize one, what would be the one to prioritize? We know it's the person's piety, it's the person's spiritualness that is the one to prioritize. So you can find a person might be a very strong scholar. Yeah? His IQ is very high. He does very well with his kitabs. He knows his uh, kitabs backwards. He knows the ayahs of the Quran. He knows the hadith. His IQ is very high. But his emotional cue is low. So he doesn't know how to interact with people. So he comes off as slightly arrogant. He comes off as slightly disconnected. And people can't take benefit from him. Because they think, Alhamdulillah, he's got ilm, but <laughs> I can't talk to this brother. You know, he's got these barriers set up and, you know, he's, he just gets frustrated really quickly and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's problematic. He lacks these kind of uh, uh, mixing with people skills. But what could be worse is that his near, his intentions, having this high IQ, is actually a status that he's after. He's not after serving the community or he's not, he's, he's not after serving Allah. So even though he might be very bright with his kitabs, he might even be good, well socially aware. But unfortunately, his spiritual cue is much low. And because his spiritual is much low, his ambitions and his motivations and his aspirations are very different. So that, that IQ, which was his tool, this intelligence that he had, which you could have used for so many different things, okay? He has unfortunately polluted that because of this lack of spiritual intelligence. Now, obviously, for many of us, we're born with the intelligence that we have. But we can understand that you can also develop your intelligence. You can also increase your understanding of things. You can train yourself. You can learn more. You can learn skills to develop and capture ilm. So there's ways to do that. Similarly, there's ways to engage and understand people more emotionally, to understand how people feel, to walk in somebody's shoes, to appreciate what they've gone through. So you can become more sympathetic, you can become more aware, and also observing how two parties engage with one another. But the spiritual side, we have to engage with our deen in that sense in order for us to also develop that side. And unfortunately, what we do is we make a caricature of ourselves. 
What happens, for example, when you want to ridicule somebody, one particular body shape that they might have, which is slightly big or slightly small or slightly strange, you caricaturize it, don't you? Make it really big or something. Okay, just to poke fun at that person. So what we do, unfortunately, is that we, if we give too much significance to our IQ and insufficient to the other areas, then we become this strange creature which is imbalanced. Which is imbalanced. The priority has to be the spiritual. That has to be the priority. Because the other two are just tools. This is your motivation. This is your driving force. This is what's pushing you. So if this is not right, it doesn't matter. You could be a doctor. You could be a, a genius. You could understand every single thing that uh, Albert Einstein or anybody else for that matter wrote. You could analyze E equals MC squared and break it down right down to the raw principles. But if the aspirations and the motivation behind it are wrong, then what use is that? What use is that? So I just wanted to share those words with you about this balance that we need to seek. And also to say that this was something which Allah SWT spoke about over 1400 years ago. It was only that this measure of intelligence started to be a factor maybe 100 or so years ago. Emotional, uh, which was something maybe about 20, 30 years ago. It wasn't even considered before. They used to sometimes call it emotional literacy. It wasn't, you know, if, you, if those of you who work in schools, it was only about 25, 30 years ago where that was looked at. If somebody misbehaved, they just said he's a bad kid. There's something wrong with him. There's fundamentally something flawed with this kid, right? Then they tried to find some medical reason that was something wrong with him. And it's only later they start thinking, actually, this could be an emotional thing. This could be something that this individual is struggling with emotionally. Maybe this behavior is just a manifestation of what this child is trying to deal with. And maybe there's some under lying emotional issues. You know, what is he being exposed to at, at home? You know, what is he engaged with? What is he observing? Why is he acting out in this particular way? What if he's after attention? Why is he after attention? Is he not getting any attention from his parents? So then they started to analyze this a little bit with a little bit more of a sympathetic uh, ear, a little bit more of a sympathetic eye rather than saying, oh, he's just a bad kid. He just likes messing about. But very rarely has the mainstream society looked at spirituality. So for example, when you look at the whole concept of jarh wa ta'deel in the hadith studies, you will see that they actually assess the spirituality of the narrator. Was he muttaqi? So they look at his memory, whether he was accused of lying. So they assess him in so many different categories across IQ, and his spiritual, and his emotional. You look in the world of academia, nobody assesses what the ambitions and the goals are for that person writing that paper, or writing that particular policy. That's not something which is looked at at the moment at all, because it's not even considered at all. But we are equipped with that, so this is again something that we can share with the wider community, especially those of us who are educators. To sort of say that this is a factor that needs to play a part. You cannot dismiss something which is a makeup of this person. Something which is a construct of this person. But it's finding the right way and right, the right language. Because the last thing you want to do is start another Trojan horse. And you know, Islamification of our schools. Islamification of our education system. So it's got to be pitched more community-wise. More social-wise. More that this ties into this, the makeup of this child. This is the identity of this child. This will be better that we unpack this in this way rather than try to unpack it in a different way. A lot of, for example, mental illnesses that uh, people are now getting um, sort of psychological input, they're now understanding, even within the NHS, that religion plays a part and how religion can be used in a positive way to impact on this person in terms of their mental health, to improve them, to make them understand things better. So we have those and those, those skills and those apparatus and that understanding. And as we quoted the ayat to you, that in the true measure of what is considered as the perfect human, what is considered as the most honorable human, what is the human that has achieved his goal is his taqwa. And that is his spiritual measure of his intelligence.
wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh